So you got yourself in a bit of trouble because OpenAI returns an error to you. And that error says that you have exceeded the token length. That's an issue, and we're gonna show you four different ways on how to fix that issue. So first, let's set up the problem here just one more time. I'm gonna copy and paste a uh, short passage into the playground on OpenAI. This is the same for the API. And I'm gonna say, hey, please summarize this thing for me. And you'll notice it's thinking about it, it's trying, oh no. The, mock, the model can only process a maximum of 4,000 token, tokens in a single request. This is an issue, and if you're running a business or you're making a product based on OpenAI, you're gonna have to work your way around this. Now, there's word of them with OpenAI's foundry to increase this model or this uh, token length. However, it's gonna cost five or six figures a year just to be able to use that one. Uh, so I'm not holding my breath for it. And regardless, I imagine that uh, model lengths will always be a problem. And so it's uh, good to learn how to invest. Uh, I'm gonna learn how to figure these out right now. Now, the way that I wanna talk about these four different methods is actually starting off with a diagram first. And I find that this is helpful because, um, well, when you get to code, it, it's kind of confusing sometimes. And so let's, let's, go, let's go into the diagram first and use some pictures. I like pictures. Um, so let's reframe the problem one more time. So OpenAI has a 4K token limit, okay? Now, scenario one, you give a prompt, it gives you a response, and it's still below the 4K, you're golden. Let's say that you have a short prompt and a longer response. As long as it's under the 4K, you're still golden. Now, number three, long prompt, short response, you're still good to go. The issue is going to be when you go from a long prompt and a long response or any combination of the two and you exceed the 4K. All right. So let's figure out how we're going to uh, fix this here with solution number one. It's what we call stuffing. Well, I, I guess I, I shouldn't really call it a solution. I should just call this a method to prompt uh, management, if you will. So in this case, we have our document and we're going to try to summarize this document. Our document is only 2K characters long. So we can feed that right into OpenAI and we can say, hey, uh, please summarize this for me. And it's going to give us the response and we're going to stay under the 4K limit, which is a good thing. However, if our document is too long, that's where we run into an issue. Again, we have the 4K limit, but our document or documents is 8K characters to 8 thousand tokens long, right? We can't feed that all into OpenAI. That's an issue and we won't be able to do it. It's going to throw an error to us. So how do we get around this? Well, let's look at prompt management method number two, which is called, oh, well, first of all, the pros of this one is you get one API call and all of your data is in the prompt, which is a good thing because you have all the context that you need uh, and the language model can, uh, can use it. The cons is that there's going to be the limited context length. You're going to run into that uh, error limit. The second method we're going to look at is called MapReduce. This is an interesting one because, again, we still have our 4K token limit, but our document is 8K tokens long. So what do we do for this one? Well, in this case, what we're first going to do is we're first going to slice up our document into individual pieces. And with those individual pieces, we're going to pass each one over. Come on now. We're going to pass each one over to open AI and we're going to say, Hey, here's your prompt and well, here's your prompt, uh, right then and there. And instead of just giving it one API call and one prompt, we're going to give it four prompts in four separate API calls. And we're going to say to open AI, Hey, it would be great if you could please summarize this for me. And in response, we're going to get four different summaries because we split it up into four different chunks. And then we're going to make a fifth call on top of that. And we're going to say, Hey, given all these summaries that you just have, give me a final summary or give me a summary of the summaries in this case. And so this is MapReduce. Now, the pros about this one is you can scale it to pretty large documents, which is cool. Not only that, it can be parallelized, meaning you can make all four of these API calls uh, in parallel. You don't, they're not, um, you don't need to wait for one to return for you to make the next one. Now, the cons of this one is you're going to start to increase uh, more API calls compared to the stuffing method. And you might lose a little bit of information because you're doing summaries on top of summaries on top of summaries in some cases. Yeah, that's method number two. Let's go ahead and look at method number three. And in this case, there's the refine method. Now with this one, what we're going to do is we're still going to split up our document, but in this case, we're just going to pass it chunk number one and we're going to say, Hey, please generate me a summary. Okay, cool. Well, with chunk number two, what we're gonna give it is we're gonna give it that summary number one that we've already gotten. 
And then we're gonna say, given this summary number one, given this context from this chunk number two, please combine the two and give us a new refined summary. And then this is gonna keep on going on and on and on until you get to the end of your uh, chunks that you have there. And then that final piece that you have would be the fully refined summary, if you will. And then that'll be your final output. Now, the pros about this one is you get pretty relevant context because you can kind of carry the important parts uh, across your chain there. The cons is that they're all independent calls, right? And so it's a synchronous uh, process here where you need to wait for one, wait for the other, wait for the other. And so it could take a long time, okay? Now, method number four that we're gonna do is one that's gonna be called map re-rank. And this one is more for uh, specific questions rather than uh, summaries. And in fact, the library that we're gonna be using today uh, doesn't even support this for summaries. They only do questions. And the way that this is gonna work here is we're still gonna split our documents, but this time we're gonna pose a question to our different chunks. And what the, um, the method is gonna do here is it's gonna say, hey, how confident are you that this answer that you've given from the chunk is the final answer that we actually need? So in this case, we asked it on our first chunk, we asked it a question and it has an 80% confidence that this is the right answer. Then, okay, we do it for chunk number two and there's only a 25% chance that this is the right answer. And this is all just the language model interpreting the right answer, so this isn't a scientific process here. And then what you do at the very end of that is you're gonna rank, whereas the re-rank part comes in, you're gonna rank the top scores that you have there and you're gonna return the answer that had the highest score. So it'd be difficult to do this with a summary, which is why we don't do it. You only do it for uh, question and answer there. So the pros for this one is, is, is it scales well, and it's but it's better for single answer questions, so not very complex questions. And then the cons is you're not combining any information in between documents because when you compare prompt one and prompt two, there's no sharing of that information across there. All right, now that is the four methods that we're gonna look at in diagram form. Let's go ahead and check these out in code form. All right, let's look at some code here. So we're gonna be using the Langchain library. now. I don't think I need to tell you, but Langchain is extremely good at file loading, document management, prompt management, chaining all these things together. And it's really the magic behind uh, how we're doing everything we're doing here. So if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. I'm gonna load up some libraries for us. This includes the file loader, the summarize chain, which is gonna do the summarizing for us, and then a QA chain, which is gonna do question answer for us. Let's load up some documents. We have a John Muir essay about Lake Tahoe, and we have a Paul Graham essay about work. This should be really exciting. Um, no, I, I like program. Uh, so we do a summary on our docs here. I just made a quick uh, function. We have one document, about 2,200, 2,300 words, and we have a preview. The glory of the Sierra. How beautiful, how poetic. And then let's look at Paul's essay. We have one document. It's about uh, 22 and a half thousand, or 20, 12 and a half thousand words. So it's quite, much, quite bigger, quite larger, and a preview. Before college, the two main things I worked on outside of school were writing and programming. Not quite as poetic as Mr. Mirror, but uh, we'll let it slide here. Let's load up our LLM. In this case, we're doing OpenAI. Pass in our key. Okay, cool. And then we're going to load our summarize chain. And this is going to be with the stuff method. So the first method that we talked about. And in this case, we're going to take our entire document and we're going to stuff it into the prompt. I like how visceral that one sounds. And so let's do it for our small doc that we have here. And I did verbose equals true because that's gonna show us what's underneath the covers and what Langchain is actually doing here. So write a concise summary of the following, which this is a Langchain prompt, by the way, and then they inserts our own text. And then we give it the text, okay, cool. And then Langchain says, give us a concise summary. So in this article, blah, 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 blah. And so we have our summary about our small doc, which is cool. Now, if we did this with a large doc, well, Langchain's gonna do the same exact thing and it's gonna say, write a concise summary of the following and then we have the following, but this is quite large. And this is where the issue's gonna be because down at the bottom, oh no, this model's maximum context length is about 4097 tokens. That's where our issue is. And so how do we get the summary of this larger doc? Well, that's where the other methods come in. So let's talk about those. First one we're gonna look at is map reduce. So again, I'm gonna say chain type equals equals map reduce, and then we're gonna say verbose equals true. Okay, now if we were to run this on the small doc, uh, I mean, it, 
no surprise here. It's more or less the same exact thing that we had with the stuffing because stuffing worked and MapReduce just has one document to work with. So let's not even worry about that. But to prove it to you, uh, you can see down here at the bottom, we get more or less the same summary. Um, now, the problem with our large doc is that it's just one document or it's one big, huge chunk. And we need to split that into smaller chunks. And the way I'm going to do that is with Langchain's recursive text splitter. And okay, cool. We're going to set this up and I'm going to say chunk size equals 400. I would normally make this much bigger, but uh, just to show you how it works, I'm going to make it smaller. Chunk overlap, I'm going to put it zero, meaning I don't need any Venn diagram similarities going on there. And I'm going to say, hey, split my documents, the large doc, and I'm going to put this into a large docs. I know it's not a wonderful way uh, naming, but that's what we're going to do. Let me do a summary of that. So now I have 201 documents um, with the same, with roughly the same amount of words that, uh, which is too many from beforehand, and we still have our preview. Okay, cool. But the important part is that we now have, instead of one big doc, we have 200 smaller docs, right? And if I were to run uh, the map reduce chain that we just made, but I'm only going to do it on the first five documents because 200 is way too many and I don't want to spend all that cash to query the API for that. Now, here's where the cool part starts to happen. So what Langchain is doing is it's saying, write a concise summary of the following, and then it gives it a shorter chunk. So it's not passing the entire thing down there. It's just this one chunk. Okay, cool. So there's section number one. Here's section number two, section number three, section number four, and section number five, because I said, just give it the first five sections. And then what it's doing is it's taking all those summaries. So here's summary one, summary two, summary three, summary four, summary five, and it's saying, write a concise summary of the following. So give me a summary of the summaries. And so we finally get a summary of our entire document that was way too big for the prompt um, via the MapReduce method, which is cool, awesome. So let's look at this one more time, but let's use the refine method. So in this case, I'll do refine, do verbose equals true. And again, I'm just gonna do this on the first five documents. And so this is where it gets kind of interesting. The very first call that it makes, remember this is uh, not in parallel. The first call that it makes is write a concise summary of the following. And then we have all the different, we have the first chunk here. And then here's where it gets kind of interesting. This is Langchain inserting this prompt here and talking to uh, OpenAI. Your job is to produce a final summary. We have provided the exist existing summary up until a certain point. So here is the summary that it pulled from chunk number one. And then we have the opportunity to, opportunity to refine using this extra context. And then given the new, new context, refine the summary. All right, cool. So that's chunk number two. Well, chunk number three, Oh, interesting. Now we have a longer summary because it had two chunks to go off of. And then it had part number three and it says, give me a new summary, give me a new summary, give me a new summary, blah, blah, blah. And so now we have a longer summary between the two and you can see the last one. And so we keep on refining and refining and refining. This is why this one's a little bit longer here. So that's the refine method on how you do it. An alternative, you're going to have to see if it works for your use case. I suggest you try them out and see how it goes. And then the final one we're going to do is we're going to switch over instead of summarization, we're going to do a question and answer, which is for map re-rank. So again, we'll say verbose equals true, but in this case, I want to return the intermediate steps, which is just a fancy way of saying, Hey, show me even more what's underneath the hood. So we got our chain there and we got our query. So who, oops, uh, who was the author's friend who got, who he got permission from to use the IBM 1401? Um, I saw this referenced in the document, so which is why I'm pulling it out. So I'm going to input my only the first five docs again. I'm going to give it my question and I'm going to return the outputs. So let's go ahead and run this. So now it's going through and what it's doing is it's, it's kind of a complicated prompt, but it's cool to see. Use the following piece of context to help answer the question at the end. In addition to the answer, also return a score of how fully it answered the user's question. And then, so not only does it say, hey, here's the format we're gonna use, how to determine the score, but then it also gives it examples about how to score, which is kind of interesting. So it gives it a couple examples here, and then begin. All right, so just by the way, this is pretty good prompt engineering, if uh, this is a fine example of it. Uh, we have context right here about the question, and then here's the final question. Who is the author's friend? Blah, 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 blah. And then it does the same thing for chunk number two chunk number three, blah, 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 blah. And then we go down 
and it finished the chain. So it went through all those different five chunks, asked the question, ranked the answer for each one of those questions, and let's see what we got here. Well, we got Rich Draves, which um, I won't show, but it is in the essay. Yes, this is the right answer. In fact, I bet you could even go and, yeah, so my friend Rich Draves is pulled out of one of the chunks, which is cool. Um, cool, now let's take a look at the intermediate steps. So what it did was, is it went through the different five docs that we passed it, and for the first doc, or for one of the docs, I don't know which number this was, this document does not answer the question. Score of zero. It does not answer, does not answer, does not answer. But for this document, it did, and it gave it a score of 100%, which is why it was uh, it returned that answer. Super cool. That is the uh, that is the map re-rank method. So in the end, there are four different methods of prompt management. It's not, it's kind of like query management, if you will, about how to chain your different commands together in order to fit your use case. Now, have fun and uh, let me know which ones work for you. We'll see you later.